Chris, ready whenever you are. The Palace, known for its glitz, the glamour, the players, the banners. And tonight, more to be added at this historic gym. It's Crosby and Holy Cross next. 1320 WHR's boys basketball matchup is sponsored by your Waterbury Neighborhood Pharmacies and Queen Bunker Hill Pharmacy, Stowe's Pharmacy, and Della Petra Pharmacy. To Georgie Roofing and Siding Inc., Logan Van Sullivan and Corey's, and Thomas and Savings Bank. Hello, everybody. Chris Saunders alongside my partner in crime, as always, Dave Grant with me. As you can hear, we know we're in the palace because it's loud, and it's one of those things where you just know when you step into this historic gymnasium, first thing you see is the banners to our right, which were stationed at midcourt, and also, too, the music is always right. <laughs> Wow, there you go. Always right. I love that pun. Way to start off the game there, Chris. Yeah, look at the uh, banners up there. Look at that 1,000-point banner up there. It's completely full and stopped at 2019. They need another banner up there. There's so many 1,000-point scorers in the history of here at Crosby. It's a great place to play. This is the Nick Rod Jelly. Uh, gym, um, I guess they call it the floor. Um, and Nick's, Nick's been around forever. It's his 44th year coaching. Um, he started coaching when I was a senior in high school. That's how long he's been in this game. And uh, it, you can just tell by all the people that come up and say hello to him before the game and everything that he's been around for a long time. But look into the game now, tonight. We saw Crosby in our last game, and they were a little rusty, but they put it together and, and got it out a win. Uh, their one-two punch, which is their, um, their uh, what do you call it, their, their two-three zone at halftime, trapping in the corners, and their three-point field goals. The trapping was fantastic. Eh, three-pointers, they were 24% at six for 25. You know, you think about what happened with Crosby, right? Because it was a new team, and with that, there's going to be a lot of adjustments. And we saw in particular with Ellis and McCray, they were the returning players. But you had Blackman, you had Stewart, and then you had some other complimentary players coming in off the bench. And in talking with Coach Algelli, he really spoke about how there was really much to be added with that. And tonight, we're going to see more of it with now a second game to be applied with this team. Well, as we were talking 
talking about in the last game, Chris. You know, early season, especially when you lose a lot of players in your mix, the, the coaches are looking for that chemistry. They're looking for the, the right combination of players that give you the best on the floor. And that doesn't happen in one, two games. That's going to be four, five, six games into the season before they really figure out what the right combination is. Same thing with Holy Cross. They graduated, what, three, three, six, four seniors last year. So, I mean, they're starting ground zero. I mean, the Rock, the one that they're going to lean heavy on, obviously Parker, All-Stater, um, two years in a row now. Uh, he's just a junior, you know? Um, and, and he's going to be the one that they're going to look to pump in between 20 and 30 points a game. You know, Dave, I got to ask you, what is it about Elijah Parker that makes him such a dynamic, as they call him, the Swiss Army Knife, right? Because it seems like he can do just about anything, and he continues to grow with his game. He, he, well, you just hit the, the nail on the head. He's an all-around player. The man plays defense. The man can dribble the ball. He can pass the ball. He can shoot. He can drive. He can rebound. He's the total package out there, and that's what you need in a player. And when he's the total package and really good at the total package, then you got a dynamite player to lead your uh, your hat on for the season. Now, some of the players that did graduate in Dane, Mullins, Fordham, and Blasky. Those were the four players that you spoke about. And not having those, you've got Acosta, Gunthra, Perone, and Roscoe. They're going to have now opportunities to be able to play in this game, but they don't have a lot of varsity minutes. No, but we saw Perone and Roscoe a, a fair amount towards yeah. the end of the season last year. So th they've got some experience out there. blood you know so uh, he's gonna get the best out of his players out there he's gonna he's gonna find that combination now the reason why we are starting so late is because the JV game went into overtime and it was a thriller in favor of Holy Cross now Crosby's hoping to not lose the varsity portion and have the mini sweep in their own home gym the Crosby Palace yeah, well, they're going to have to be a lot better from the free throw line tonight if they're going to do that. They were very dismal the last game. I did notice, though, watching the game, both the JV of Holy Cross and the JV of Crosby were dynamic from the free throw line. Maybe it's a home court thing, maybe it's not. Now, also another thing to mention as well, through the first half, DJ Melendez off the bench was outscoring the starting five. And I mentioned that to Coach Nick Algelli, and he said, Chris, we can't have that again. We can't have our bench outscoring the top five because in every game is obviously going to be different. Those starters need to be able to come away with points, and the bench cannot carry throughout the entirety of the season. Well, absolutely. The starters are there because they're supposed to be the ones that are producing. You know, the, the bench is supposed to be complimentary. The, the players that come out there and give you, you know, some good minutes, give you some rebounds, give you some points, not outscore the whole starting five. No, they can't. They can't. Now, Dave, real quick, before we send it back to the station, what are the keys for both Crosby and for Holy Cross? Well, Crosby, obviously, their key is shut down Parker. You know, if you can shut him down and make the other players try to score, you got a good chance of beating them. Holy Cross, they, they got to go to Parker. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying, it's going to be Parker, Parker, um, and more Parker. And Parker. Yeah. <laughs> Curly, listen, right now the official. Listen, yep. Uh, yep. You do have to have someone complimenting Parker out there. He can't do the whole thing. So that's a that's a key for Holy Cross. Who's going to step up and give you 10 to 15 points besides what Parker's going to give you? When you were at Pomperoc, Dave, was there ever a scenario like that where a majority of the seniors graduate from the starting five? Well, when I was a senior, we had four seniors starting. So that was it. I didn't experience it myself at any point in time. Um, we were a young team, and we were, you know, by the time we were sophomores in high school, four of us were starting. Of the varsity team, so um, no, I didn't have that situation. We'll send it back to the station. We come back. The starting five and tip here from the Crosby Palace. It's Holy Cross and Crosby for the NVL Connecticut Boys Basketball Game of the Week on 1320 WATR and I 7.7 FM. The following items and actions are prohibited on school grounds. Weapons of any kind, physical altercations of any kind, face coverings and obscure identity, alcohol, illegal substances. Vaping and tobacco products. Please note that there are video surveillance cameras both inside and outside. 
We expect all attendees to adhere to the policies set forth by the Board of Education. This includes respecting the facility staff and fellow attendees. We expect student athletes to maintain the values of integrity, respect, cooperation, and honesty. Let's join together to support student athletes, promote good sportsmanship, and create lasting memories. I can't write this. At this time, please rise, if able, and remove your hats to honor America in the playing of our national anthem. We forgot to mention this, Dave. Holy Cross, this is their first game of the season. So well, they had quite a little bit of a stretch as far as not being able to have any meaningful uh, games that meant something. So this will be the first one for this young group. As we mentioned, uh, it will be four juniors and one sophomore. That is a good point there, Chris, because uh, Crosby has those two games behind them already, uh, and they've had a chance to, to put their players in the mix and, and do some substituting in game situations where Holy Cross has just been practiced from there. The starting five for Holy Cross, number 12 sophomore, Dalen Roscoe. Number 10, Gavin Perone. Number two, junior, Jordan Gunthrow. Number one, junior, Adrian Acosta. And number zero, the Swiss Army Knife, Junior, Elijah Parker. Starting five for Holy Cross, coached by Ryan Olson. He's been with the program for eight plus seasons, Dave. Eight plus seasons as the varsity coach. Yes. He's been there a lot longer. As the and coach. he has a winning record, well above with the wins. Yep. He hasn't had a losing season yet. He has not. Nope. And he's brought this Holy Cross team to multiple quarterfinal appearances as well, which yes, we'll discuss yes. later on. And now the starting five for the Crosby Bulldogs, coached by Nick Augelli. The Godfather. <laughs> you do it best. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> Number three, senior. Elijah Stewart. Number five, junior. Number five, junior, CJ McCray. Number 13, senior, Kenai Glenn. Number one, senior guard. Number one, senior, Curtis Ellis. And lastly, number four, senior, Jaden Benjamin. So you have senior, 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 junior, senior. Four seniors and a junior. So a little bit different than Holy Cross, which is almost reversed in a sense, and then down a class. A lot of experience out there at Crosby. Yes. A lot of experience, but not together. A lot of them have flip-flopped schools back and forth, so it's not like they've played this whole time together on the same team. And the kids on Crosby that were here last year did not have a lot of varsity minutes because they were coming off the bench. Exactly. So this will be, you know, and we also forgot to mention the officials. We've got Steve Kirk, who's dapping us up. We've got Chris Reno and Ray Vanacore. And we know those names pretty well. This is typically the crew that does a lot of the games when it's a three officiating crew. Yeah, this is a good crew out here today. Uh, we had a great crew at the Dog Tuck game. Yep. Um, that, that was uh, Gambardella and Bagnoli. Bagnoli you actually were very, very nice for the first set. Listen, listen. <laughs> they only missed 
They only missed like two or three calls the whole game. Yeah. They were absolutely consistent and fantastic. And, and if you've listened to me over the last 20 years on the radio, <laughs> you're, you're saying, is there something wrong with Dave to say is this something like that? Are you overheating? Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> they were. They were just on the money. They were. Crosby in their home. White. Holy Cross in their way. Green with yellow trim on the sides. Parker is at the center of the court, and so is Kenai Glenn. Chris Saunders, Dave Grant, Chris Fortier, the 1320 WATR Studios. Crosby 1-0. Holy Cross their first game of the season. Holy Cross is ready. Crosby is ready. The opening tip won by Holy Cross as they go right to left on your dial. Crosby defending left to right. Parker at the top of the key, guarded by two. That's Ellis and Glenn. Now it's going to be Gunthrop. Gunthrop trying to give it to P uh, Perone, rather, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Crosby. Stays with Holy Cross. Crosby right away into their 2-3 trap. Getting the people in the corner so that you can and when I say corners, that's like half court line and, and out of bounds line so you can't go anywhere. And that's what they're doing. They're trapping there and they've started it already this game. And travel and away we go the other side. Alrighty, quickly. That was Roscoe. First turnover by Holy Cross. 7.39 in this first quarter. No score between the two. Well early as Benjamin will be inbounding behind his own basket going left to right on your dial. Benjamin Holy, to Cray. Holy Cross is in a 2-2-1, which is typically not a, a, a try to turnover. It's more of a containment press. Trying to get it to Stewart. The ball is loose. Perone picks it up for a quick second. Now a scrum, and a jump ball has been called. Which will stay with Crosby. Possession, as you heard Dave say, stays with the Bulldogs. That will be Ellis inbounding three-fourths of the court on the side of the Holy Cross in their home white uniforms. Hey, listen, that ball came over this way. You shot away. you got to get in front of me, man. I've been hurt too many times. Don't do that. you got to protect me. <laughs> Benjamin, three-fourths of the court to Kanai Glenn. 7-17, no score between Holy Cross and Crosby. McCray. Outside to Glenn. Glenn guarded by Perone, trying to go high low off the foot of Stewart. That's Acosta for Holy Cross. Three fourths of the court on the Holy Cross, rather Crosby side. Now Acosta in the corner, guarded by two. Stewart trying to take the ball up, then they call a jump ball. And Holy Cross is definitely looking a little rusty out there. You can tell the speed's a little different in terms of Crosby and Holy Cross. Yeah, they're a little out of sync right now. Under seven to play in this first quarter. No score between both. Trying to get to Perone. Stays on Holy Cross with Parker. Parker drawing two outside. Long range three. Missed by Holy Cross. One and done. Missed shot by Roscoe, the sophomore. Benjamin, three-fourths of the court on the Holy Cross side. Left to right on your dial. Benjamin outside of McCray. McCray guarded by Parker. Now Ellis. Ellis, three-fourths of the court in the corner to Glenn. Glenn gets it over to Benjamin. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Benjamin to McCray. McCray to Glenn. Still no score. 6.30 to go in the first. McCray, three. Back iron. Stewart gets it for Crosby, and it's off the hands of Perona Holy Cross. So a second chance for the Bulldogs. And the shot clock resets now. One second ticked off. 34 on the shot clock. 6.24 to go in the first quarter. Good defense by Holy Cross. Good patience by Crosby on that offensive set. McCray to the top of the key to Glenn. Now Ellis swinging around the three-point line near in the corner. Outside Ellis again, still outside the three-point line. McCray, three, is good. McCray bangs in a three. He had nine points against Naugatuck. And he also makes a key three to put the Crosby Bulldogs on the board. 3 nothing. 6.06 to go in this first quarter. Holy Cross keeps the balls as it was off the knee of a Crosby player. Crosby really good in figuring out that Holy Cross had switched their defense from man-to-man uh, -man to zone on that out-of-bounds and did well with the uh, offensive set on it. Roscoe guarded by two, trying to regain, look for somebody he does in Acosta. And now we have a timeout call by Holy Cross. We'll take a timeout as well. 5.55 to go in this first quarter. It's 3-0 Crosby over Holy Cross. Chris Saunders alongside Dave Grant here from the Crosby Palace right here on 1320 WATR 97.7 FM.
All right, Chris, whenever you're ready. Gunthrum to Perone, guarded by Ellis in the left low post, back outside. Gunthrum long range three off the back iron, missed Perone fighting for the offensive rebound. Cross and it'll be off of Holy Cross, possession back to the Bulldogs. Perone had good position in there, just couldn't pull the ball down. McCray inbounding behind the Crosby basket, 2-1, or rather 2-2-1 defense for Holy Cross. They break the press, that's Glenn. Glenn on the drive, Glenn contested, no foul call, they let him play. Nice job by Acosta defensively for Holy Cross. Perone looking outside to Acosta. The defense retreats for Crosby. Blackman is in for Crosby. Gunthrop trying to get to Parker. He does. Parker drawing two. Nice pass and count it. Possible three-point play. Roscoe with the points. The assist, Elijah Parker. David, now that's an example of an unselfish player. Parker, the leading scorer, could have easily taken that ball to the hoop, but he Shooting found a man well. going to the basket, wide open, and he gave it up. Foul was on Glenn, his first, team's first. The and one free throw by Roscoe is going to be no good. So we have our first missed free throw of the game. McCray, three forts, driving on Acosta, may have been tipped, Ellis fighting for it for Crosby. Now he's on the ground, jump ball has been jump called. Ball. Our third jump ball of this game, 5.05 to go in the first quarter. It's 3-2, Crosby leads by one. Don't you feel like at one point in time someone's gonna just yell out at the top of their lungs, fumble! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we saw a lot of that, too, in the Noggy game as well. That's a sign of good, scrappy defense. Crosby has the ball. They are inbounding behind the basket of Holy Cross. All right, the, the officials were sitting there and conferring as to what to do with the shot clock. It's been reset. Benjamin back to McCray. Good eye out of you, Dave. Can I, Glenn? Has it intercepted, that's Parker. Parker driving all the way, trying to go coast to coast. He can't finish, one and done. A missed opportunity for Holy Cross to take their first lead of the game. Benjamin, guarded by Roscoe, now drawing three, and he also gets the foul on Holy Cross. The team's first, let's see who it's on. You know, Parker, if he's gonna take off going Roscoe, coast to coast, Roscoe, Roscoe. as your leading scorer, he's gotta complete that play right there. Not only for the fact that they need the points, but for the morale of the team, for the, the um, just to get the team up and going. Foul was on Roscoe, his first, team's first. Benjamin's first free throw is no good. <sighs> <sighs> and it begins. Benjamin, 57% from the free throw line, didn't shoot too many against Naugatuck, and had nine points as well in the win over Nogi. They won 68 to 56. Second free throw by Benjamin is no good again. So 0 of 2 is Crosby from the line. Into the game is Obasu, number 14. Reach in foul on Crosby, team second. That's going to be on number two. Crosby, that's on Melendez. Melendez. And that's First. what Holy Cross has to do, is if they're going to break that 2-3, if they've got to do it quickly and get in between the two players, they're going to draw a foul each and every time. Kinsey waiting to come in for the Bulldogs. 4.38 to go in this first quarter. 3-2. Very low scoring, Dave, yes. thus far. Gunthrib working on Blackman. Lost the ball, then regained his own basketball. Gunthrib, right corner three, and gets as he fell. Both teams have each made a three, and Holy Cross has their first lead of the game. 5-3, 4.20 to go in this first quarter. Three missed by Ellis. Defensive rebound by Parker as it goes out of bounds, and it stays, no, it's back over to Holy Cross. That was a good call. I was watching that, that was a good call. Official was right on top of that. So Holy Cross with under five to play in this first quarter gets their first lead 5-3 over the Bulldogs. A May three by Gunthrub. Coach Argelli's yelling, white ball, white ball. He ain't getting anywhere with Steve Kirk. <laughs> Parker, three-fourths of the court. Left side, Gunthrub wants to try for another three, and it's an air ball. Goes in the corner, Acosta keeps it. Second chance for Holy Cross. Acosta to Blackman. Blackman intercepts it from Crosby. Kinsey over to McCray. McCray in the corner to Melendez. Melendez, top of the key to Kinsey. 3.50 to go in this first quarter, 5-3 in favor of Holy Cross. Blackman, McCray, 
And Gunther takes it away from McCray. Parker, vertical pass. Obasu, nice play. The assist, Parker, the points, Obasu. It's 7 3, Holy Cross. Melendez, high arcing three. No, he missed again in the corner. Melendez gets a second chance. Quick pass over to Blackman. He missed the bunny. Trying to fight for the ball again, but it's loose. And it's going to be a jump ball. No, wait for a second. They didn't call it. Now, foul of the play. Holy Cross and Crosby both really scrappy on the ground, getting after that ball. Holy Cross got it, and inadvertently it's going to happen. It's either going to be a jump ball or somebody's going to foul someone. They called the foul on Kinsey, team's third, Kinsey's first. So 7-3, Cross leading Crosby, 3.15 to go in this first quarter. If you told me through roughly five-plus minutes, Dave, we'd have less than 12 points scored, I would think you were crazy. Well, Throne. You know, it, it's just uh, the way the game's been played, that's all. Gunther missed the three to the hands of Parker. Parker fighting through traffic and gets the points. He's on the board. It's 9-3, a six-point lead for Holy Cross. And Cross is on what, a seven-nothing seven run? Nine-nothing nine nothing run. Nine-nothing run, okay. 2.46 to go in the first quarter. Melendez near the left elbow, now retreats outside, guarded by Obasu. He's a big boy. I don't know how tall. He's got to be like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Blackman, quick pass. Ellis outside, retreats to the top of the key. Melendez in the corner. 2.25 to go in the first quarter. 9-3 in favor of Holy Cross. Ellis down to two on the shot clock. One before the buzzer. It's an off arc three. One and done is Crosby. And now Parker has it for Holy Cross. A 9-0 run for the Crusaders. Trying to make it more. Perone to the corner. Roscoe. Obasu, Obasu drawing, and he gets the foul, and I think they got Kinsey. Let's see. I like his game. He's strong in there. What is that Obasu? Is he a junior or a sophomore? So here's the thing. He was only on JV. He's a senior. Really? With his size. Well, he's just coming into his game then. So would you say, Dave, that maybe Coach Olsen may have something here with Obasu? He could very well develop during this season. First free throw missed. We have not seen a free throw made in this game as that brings the uh, the nails to the chalkboard for my partner. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just horrendous. <laughs> Two of five to go in the first. Second free throw, good. Hey, Dave, we got a made free throw. Angels are singing hallelujah. <laughs> Number 11, Martin Schofield. Schofield is in. Kinsey is out, who does have two personal fouls. 2.05 to go in the first quarter. 10-3, Holy Cross leads the Bulldogs. Ellis inbounding over to Benjamin. Benjamin guarded by Roscoe. Melendez trying to stretch the court. Melendez now three-fourths to the side of Holy Cross. Melendez, no look over to Benjamin. Nice pass. The assist, Melendez, the points. Benjamin, his first points of the game. That cuts the run by Holy Cross. That was a good play by uh, Crosby to get that ball up in transition. Holy Cross leads by five, and we got a foul on Parker as he was driving into the left low post. That should be now five on Crosby. The foul was on Melendez. Now that's his second. And as I said, team's fifth. At the line for two is Parker. Now I'm going to say this, okay? He's the leader of this team. He's got to lead by example. He's got to make these free throws. As the leading scorer, yep. you've got to be able to come up there and bang them both in. First free throw by Parker is good. Holy Cross has made back-to-back -back free throws. Another substitution as Zai Harge is in a sophomore. He comes in for Roscoe. So a sophomore to sophomore swap. 145 to go in this first quarter. Holy Cross has looked pretty good since that Olsen timeout. Yeah, he regrouped them out there. They were very rusty at the beginning. Second free throw is made. Parker with four. Three straight free throws made by Holy Cross as the Crusaders lead 12-5 over the Bulldogs. Bulldogs have been a little bit cold, Dave. Yeah, they're about as cold as the other side of the pillow. <laughs> Ellis gets by two, and it's intercepted by Harge. Harge to Parker. Nice defensive play by the Bulldogs. The ball is loose, trying to fight for the Crusaders, and it looks like Crosby stepped out of bounds. That was Ellis behind the Crosby basket. But nice defensive play to get back. That was a team effort. That was. I mean, Parker was going up to dunk that, and they got that right out of his hands. Gunthrop inbounding behind the Crosby basket. Gunthrop looking for somebody. He gets it to Obasu. Obasu to Harge. It's loose. Fighting for the ball are both teams. 
And it looks like trying to see who, looking for the, one of the officials, Chris Reno. He'll call it on the Holy Cross, number yep. four. That's on Harge, his first, team second. So the score, 12-5, Holy Cross leads, Acosta is in. And it looks like, trying to see who's coming out, and We're going to park Parker. a little break. Okay, you surprised by that? Um, yeah, I am. I mean, it's not like it's a significant lead. I would leave my lead in scoring, but hey, Coach also knows what he's doing out there. 3-2 yep. defense for a second for Holy Cross. Blackman will bring it three-fourths of the court. And now we have a official officials timeout. timeout, yes. Because the, the shot clock never started. 116 to go in this first quarter, 12-5. Holy Cross leading the Bulldogs. Chris Saunders alongside Dave Grant. And uh, the officials, Steve Kirk, Ray Vanacor, and Chris Reno. As Benjamin will be inbounding on the three-fourth side of Holy Cross, left to right in your dial. Benjamin, Schofield, McCray, Blackman, and Ellis. The five on the court for Crosby. Benjamin to Blackman. Now Ellis, guarded by Perrone. Ellis, outside the three-point line, now stretching three-fourths. Cuts by Perrone. McCray, open from the right corner, three. Back iron, missed the three. Schofield fighting for the ball. That's Acosta for Holy Cross. He's trying to get by Blackman, and we're going to have another jump ball. Dave, I'm telling you right now, if you had the over-under for jump balls at four, you would have, if you took the under, we both would have lost. Yep. But like you said, that's tough-nosed defense. That's all it is, is, is everyone is going for the ball. And that's what you want out of your players. You don't want them to be passive out there. You want them to be aggressive going after the ball. Holy Cross has Acosta, Gunthrub, Harge, Obasu, and Perone. Gunther will bring it up for the time being as Parker takes a seat. Is not in foul trouble. Is leading the team in scoring, but just, you know, getting a break. 47 seconds to go in this first quarter. 12-5, Holy Cross leads. And Obasu adds more. And now he leads the team in scoring with five. Driving in is Kanai Glenn. He missed the bunny. Blackman was fouled in the left low post. The shot clock is off. 33.7 seconds to go in the first. I thought Glenn was fouled going up for that. They're letting him play out there, but at least look, they're being consistent with their calls. And that's all you ask for from an official is consistency. If you're going to let them play, let them play the whole game. If you're going to call tic-tac fouls, call tic-tac fouls the whole game. They're letting them play out there. They're being consistent. Blackman at the line for two. Crosby has not made a free throw in this first quarter. And it continues. Dave, when was the last time Crosby scored? What was the uh, minute? Well, they scored at the 153. And prior to that, it was 608. So it's been a while for them. A little yep. bit of a drought. Second free throw by Blackman is good on a swish. So Krause makes their first free throw. They're one of four from the charity stripe. 14-6, Holy Cross leads. Under 30 to play in this first quarter. McCray going for the steal. He somehow keeps it alive to the hands of Ellis. Now Gunther for Holy Cross behind the basket. And it looks like we have a whistle blown. Foul on Holy, on uh... On, uh, Ellis. No, they're saying that Ellis had possession oh. then was out of bounds. I thought, I thought they said he fouled him. Parker's back in. Zai Harge, number four, is out. So Holy Cross has with 21.6 seconds to go. Gunthrop, Parker, Acosta, Obasu, and Perone. Stewart's also back in for Crosby. Down to 14 Watch seconds. Parker, guarded by two. Gunthrop lost the handle, regains. Stewart on him. Gunthrop looking down to seven. And we've got a kickball kick on Kanai Glenn of Crosby. Stays Holy with Holy Cross with 6.6 .6 seconds to go in the first quarter. Watch the, them get the ball to Parker real quickly, and he's going to do his own thing. Parker, as you heard Dave say, out to Acosta, down to three, down to two. Acosta before the buzzer. No, he couldn't get help from the glass. And we're through one here from the Crosby Palace. 14-6. Holy Cross Crusaders lead the Crosby Bulldogs here from the Crosby Palace. Right here on 1320 WATR, 97.7 FM.
back at the Crosby Palace. And at the end of that quarter, Obasu from Holy Cross looked like he wrenched his knee, had to be helped off the court, is still being looked at. Is he, I think he's seriously hurt. That is not a good sign because he's leading this team in scoring with five, but he impressed you, Dave, in that first quarter. He did. Let's see, can Crosby capitalize with Obasu being injured? Can I Glenn outside to Ellis, right corner three, off the back iron, second chance, offensive rebound for Kanai Glenn. Glenn on the bunny, he missed Ellis on the putback, and it helped from the window. And McCray did a little bit of a flex after that from Ellis. Well, it was good offensive rebounding by Crosby. 14-8. Holy Cross still leads. Crosby trying to cut the deficit. Leading score for Crosby was McCray with three. Oh, three-point land right there from Gunthrop. He's got six. And then he gets the steal to two on one. Gunthrop give and go right side, puts it in. That's Roscoe, he's got four. And it's 19-8, Holy Cross. They're looking like they got some momentum after that timeout from Olsen in that first quarter. They did, they regrouped really well, and Crosby just like it went ice cold, and now they're coming back. Lane. The are open. Yes. Yes. There they are. <laughs> Second May three by Crosby. It's 19-11, to 11, an eight-point lead for Holy Cross. Under seven to play in this first half. Kickball, reset the clock. I don't know about you, Dave, but this crowd seems very, like, timid, right? I mean, it's it's very quiet for, uh, you know, a Holy Cross-Crosby matchup. And, and it's packed. I know. It's packed, and I, I can't believe how quiet it is. Well, it's it's early in the game, I guess. The, nothing's been really flashy out there to start, so. That's true. You know, it's not like you've had any breakaways, any dunks, or, you know, <laughs> anything like that. It's, it's just been a, you know, it's just been a, a hard-nosed game so far. Holy Cross has Gunthrop, Parker, Acosta. Also have Roscoe and Perone, the five on the court for the Crusaders. Outside of Gunthrop, who just made his second three. He's got six points. Off the knee, they keep it alive. That's Parker. Parker draws two. Roscoe outside. Parker for three. Slash. Third May three by Holy Cross. That's Parker. His first May three. He's got seven. Leads the team in scoring. It's now an 11 point lead for Holy Cross. 6.18 to go in the first half. Kanai Glenn, wearing number 13, guarded by Parker. Trying to answer back, it was tipped by Parker. But it stays with Crosby. Offensive rebound by Ellis, back to Glenn. Glenn to Blackman, Blackman to Melendez. Melendez working on Roscoe. Now Ellis, catch and shoot three off the back iron. Ellis trying to fight for a third chance, he does. Ellis is pure on the teardrop. This kid's got a nice motor, Dave, he really does. Ellis is just a ball hawk, and you need a ball hawk on your team, and he just keeps going after it. Cuts the lead down to nine for Holy Cross. 5.43 to go in this first half. Blocking Fouls foul. on the court, yes. That was on the court. Teams first of this second quarter. It's going to be on Stewart. That's his first. And Obasu is still over on the sideline under the basket with ice on his knee. I would not be surprised if they didn't call an ambulance and take him out of here. He looks like he's hurt really bad. Gunthrub to the right corner. Parker. Outside. Gunthrub. Three. No, missed the three, one and done is Holy Cross here. Crosby trying to cut the deficit, they're down by nine. Melendez to Kanai Glenn. Glenn working through, Eurostep, missed the bunny, Perone off his hands. That's gonna be Roscoe. Roscoe to Parker, he's on a foot chase. Parker trying to go coast to coast, and he had the ball hit out. No, they're saying it was off of his hand. He had full possession and lost off the right hand. Went right off his hip, now. He tried to sell it, he tried. He was going coast to coast on that. But it was just a little out of control. I don't know about you, Dave, but maybe it's because I'm forgetting some things. But Parker looks like he's a little bit more aggressive early on than what we saw last year. A little more aggressive and a little more unselfish. Yes. He's definitely passing the ball a lot when I thought that he'd be taking a shot. So he's definitely playing team ball out there. Blackman guarded by Perone. 22 on the shot clock. Five minutes to go in this first half. Down by nine are the Bulldogs. Ellis who's been a hawk on both sides, making plays left and right. Wearing number one, also one of the captains of this team. Ellis to Blackman. Parker going for the steal, he whiffed. Ellis, guarded by Roscoe. Catch and shoot, Kinsey, three, it's pure. 
Kinsey makes the three, and you know when you're in the palace, it's gonna be raining threes. It is. Down to a six point lead for Holy Cross, 4.36 to go in this first half. Perone to Parker, guarded by Ellis. Now Roscoe, Acosta in the left low post, guarded by Kinsey and Blackman, trying to go for the jump ball, and they got it. And Olsen's even saying you gotta look up because Acosta was looking Some down in the left low post. They, they gotta move the ball a lot quicker if they're gonna stay out of that trap. If they hold the ball, it's going, they're gonna get trapped. They gotta move the ball. Holy Cross has gotta move it quicker out there. Would you say, Dave, that the, almost in a way that Holy Cross, that their idea is right, but they're not executing. Does that make sense? Yes. And when they do execute, when they do move that ball quickly, they're getting good looks. Gunther inbounding behind the Crosby basket. I don't know what the, the stop was. I don't know if it was another shot clock, shot clock issue. <laughs> <laughs> 19 to go in this first half. Melendez gets the steal away. Melendez drawing contact and can't make the bunny in the right low post. But the foul is going to be on Roscoe, his second team's first of this second quarter. And I'm going to tell you what, Roscoe did his job. If you're going to tag the guy, you're going to make sure he doesn't get the basket, okay? And that's exactly what he did. He didn't give him a freebie. You know, Crosby's been horrible from the free throw line. Make him earn it. They're one of four, Dave. Ugh. I know it's making uh, Coach Samaro up in heaven just wondering why, why. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, one of the things we used to do was, um, you, you know, suicides? You remember what a suicide was? Oh, I can't forget suicides. All right. I well, remember them very well. First every, free throw made. Every free throw you missed, you had to do a suicide the next practice. Who missed the most free throws on your team? Not many. Not many. As a team, we shot over 80%. Second free throw by Melendez is good. Three of six is Crosby from the line. Melendez's first two points had 12 against Nogi. 22 to 18. It's down to a four-point lead for Holy Cross with 4.13 to go in this first half. Chris Sarnes alongside Dave Grant from the Crosby Palace. New into the game. As a steal made by Holy Cross, and we're going to have a push. Let's see if it's on Benjamin or Melendez. Team second. Inbounding will be Gunthrub. Three ports on the side of Crosby, right to left on your dial. Parker from the right elbow, a little bit too hard. Kinsey on the defensive rebound. Kinsey gives over to Benjamin. Three ports on the Holy Cross side. Melendez from the left corner. It's an air ball, one and done is Crosby. Swarming through, now Crosby drops. Gunther will bring it up. Gunther does have six points, gets it over to Parker. 3.43 to go, Ellis on the steal. Ellis for Crosby, then lost the ball, regained. No look over to Melendez. Melendez puts it up and draws the foul. And that's going to be on Parker. Can you say on that pass? Telegraph that pass. And then, you know what the problem with kids today? Not only was the, the, the pass telegraphed, but the player doesn't come and meet the ball. They sit there and wait for the ball to get to him, and that gives the player, the defensive player, time to get over there and get the steal. You gotta go to the ball. And you know who started this entire thing is the first free throws made by Melendez, Ellis again. Yep. Ellis is doing not just scoring, but he's creating as well. Second free throw, good. Five of eight from the line is Crosby. Melendez with all of his points coming from the free throw line. He's got four. It's down to only a two point lead. It was once 11 for Holy Cross. That's a 9-0 run by Crosby. Parker, left corner, three. A little bit short by Holy Cross. Off the hands of Blackman. Parker fighting for it. No foul called. It's loose again. Acosta's right there. No, it rolls in and out. It's still in the left low post. It's Blackman over to Kinsey. Kinsey driving. Kinsey finishes. And we're tied 22 all. Five for Kinsey. 305 to go in the first half. Perone over to Acosta and a reach in by Blackman. His first team's third. You really didn't think Crosby was going to disappear, did you? No. 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 Not at the palace. <laughs> That's an 11-0 run by Crosby. They were down 22 to 11, and now it's 22 all. Holy Cross inbounding, Blackman going for the steal. Crosby has the steal, Melendez over to Ellis. And we've got a foul Walk. 
Oh, they call, yes. Possession. A little bit of a travel on Crosby. That's Ellis. Now, I know Nick Jelly doesn't like that call, but again, you're going to hear from me. That was a good call. You're saying a Mason Roundtree. Holy Cross is telegraphing their passes. Holy Cross is not coming to meet their passes. And Crosby is just picking them off left and right. Holy Cross has got to, to, to if they're going to get back in some sort of momentum, has got to come to the ball and not telegraph their passes. Perone guarded by two, three-fourths of the court. Perone just staying in bounds off the knee of Kinsey, and it stays for Holy Cross. 2.49 to go in this first half. You can't pick up your dribble there in a trap. No. You can't. When the 2-3 is right there trapping, you can't pick up your dribble. It's called a trap for a reason. Yep. Here they come to the corners again. Parker gets it outside. Gunthrub drawing Ellis, spinning by outside the three-point line, top of the key to Acosta. Acosta trying to get the pass. It's hit up high. He's trying to steal it as Benjamin. Benjamin then gets the steal. Foul on Perone. Oh, it's going to be a foul on Perone. Nice that job. That was a good call. Yep. I was about to say, nice job by the official to kind of Break that up very yep. quickly, and with how physical the jump ball has been, this has been an aggressive game. We're tied 22 all, 2.36 to go in this first half. Yeah, it's been a very physical game out there so far for both sides. Benjamin on the side of Holy Cross, three forts. Now outside the three point line on the Holy Cross side. Kinsey trying to get over to Blackman, and it was off of Holy Cross. That was Roundtree. That was a great play to jump in into Blackman. He was underneath there, he just couldn't convert. And mounting his Kinsey behind the Holy Cross basket. Chris Saunders alongside Dave Grant. We're at the Crosby Palace. Crosby and Holy Cross. Three by Melendez. It's good. DJ Melendez. Melendez is on fire. And Melendez has the lead for Crosby. 25 to 22. 215 to go in this first half. But Melendez is right. He can be deadly. Yes, he can. Gunthrim lost the handle. It's loose, picked up by Crosby. Here goes the steal, two on one. Nice pass over to Ellis. Oh. Ellison missed the bunny, but the putback is good by hey, Benjamin. Benjamin. And it forces, yes. Yeah. It forces a timeout by Olsen. We'll keep it right here, 27 to 22. Crosby leads over Holy Cross with 158 to go in this first half. And I'm telling you, it's the steals. They're forcing pressure and they're almost in a way making this Holy Cross team have to second guess themselves. This is typical Crosby basketball. You gotta understand, if you're gonna come into the palace, they're gonna trap you, they're gonna be aggressive, they're gonna fill in the gaps, they're gonna go for the steals, they're gonna create their offense off their defense, and that's what they did. Something that Nicola Jelly said to them, woke them up, they were down 11 points, they're up five now on a 16-0 run. Holy Cross is as cold as the other side of the pillow, my friend. As you said, this Crosby team creates their points off of turnovers. And even when they had five team fouls in the first quarter, they were still being aggressive. And I mean, that's something that you can teach that to a certain degree. But these kids, especially from, and let's give credit, right? The JV coach, Coach DeVito, big into defense. And he is on them. And like you mentioned, too, with the Noggy game, when they get to the varsity level, they know what's expected. They're ready to go because the JV coach is on the same page, doing the same exact thing. It's an easy transition. On the court for Holy Cross is Parker, Perone, Gunthrub, Acosta, and also have Roundtree. And Crosby has Melendez, Ellis, Benjamin, Blackman, and Kinsey. 158 to go in this first half, 27 to 22 in favor of the Crosby Bulldogs. As you heard Dave say, a 16-0 run by Crosby. Gunthrub, swarmed by two, trying to get by the trap. And he loses the basketball, that's Ellis. Ellis trying to go coast to coast, and it's a soft slam by Ellis. He's got six. And I think we've got a whistle on Ellis for saying something afterwards, so I think, yes, that's a T. So personal foul and a T. Team's fourth. And now at the line will be Gunther for the technical fouls. And I think that was justified. Cannot say something after that. Yeah, that's just a, you know, they're kids out there. It, it, it's a move It's the happens. emotion. Yeah. I mean, oh, yep. you can't really fault them that much for it. Free throw missed by Gunther. Holy Cross, three of six from the line. Holy Cross is down by seven. Holy Cross has not scored in five minutes. That's a long time. And it stays five minutes. 
Three of seven from the stripe. Real quick, halftime will be myself and Jason Robinson. He'll be on to talk about what he's been up to since leaving the Crosby Palace as a, a Billy Finn Award winner. They don't give those, they don't give that award out to just anybody. No, no, they don't. He was well deserving of it last year. Great kid, always smiling too. He, he's just, he's a super <laughs> kid. I, I just love that kid. He's, he's just a great, he's not only a great basketball player, he's a great kid. Parker driving, missed the bunny. Can't even get the bunny there, no. jeez. And it goes out of bounds. I mean, when it rains, it pours. And in terms of Holy Cross, Dave, 29-22, 1.31 to go in this first half. Crosby leads. It's just been, it has been good well, well, Holy, for Holy Cross. Holy Cross went on a tear. Yes. All right, and it looked like Crosby disappeared. And now Crosby's gone on a tear and Holy Cross has disappeared. So like you say, he who streaks last. Yeah. Kenai Glenn, second chance for the Bulldogs. Benjamin, three. No, back-to-back -back misses for the Bulldogs. And we'll have another jump ball jump called. Ball. Possession Holy Cross. 11 to go. Ball. No, possession Crosby, possession okay. Crosby. The possession arrow is not on the uh, scoring table, so kind of guess there a little bit. Melendez is in, Kenai Glenn is out. So Crosby has Kinsey, McCray, Blackman, Melendez, and Benjamin. Melendez has been a, a big spark on this run for Crosby. Seven points, Dave, in the second quarter. All coming in the said quarter. Yeah. Kinsey to Blackman, outside to McCray. McCray, Kinsey from the left corner. Off the back iron, one and done. Defensive rebound by Roundtree. One minute to go in the first half. Down by seven is Holy Cross, 29 to 22. Roundtree, and it's an air pass thrown away by the Bulldogs. Melendez with two on him. Left hand finger roll is pretty. He's got nine. 31 22 Bulldogs. Parker to Perone. Perone in the corner, swarmed by Blackman and Kinsey. And it's off of Blackman again. They are just trapping wherever the ball is, Dave. They are going to that basketball with at least two players. It's a 20 0 run by Crosby. Holy Cross scored the last time at the 627 mark of this quarter. They have not scored in six minutes. So that's not good. No. <laughs> how do you how do you break the trap? Well, you gotta get the ball in the middle, look weak side quickly, and throw it to weak side, and they gotta start making some of their shots. Gunther from the left corner. There's the three, and the whistle blown after. And a foul on Holy Cross underneath. So the three will count, but the foul's on Acosta, his first team's fourth. Now each team with four team fouls. Now team fouls do get erased at every quarter, but the personal fouls do stay. As Ellis is on the bench, Melendez waiting to come back in. We'll see for who, and it's gonna be McCray. So Coach Algelli still trying to figure out with his bench that he has, right? As far as what what's the right rotation? Well, you, you know what? That's gonna come as the season goes on, look at him, he's over to coaching. He's coaching away on there. He's saying, this is why you're, this is why you're sitting down right now, okay? Talking to McCray. Yeah, and, and you know, they just gotta accept that. Listen, Crosby players know they're gonna come in, they're gonna go out. Oh, what is that? He is stepped he... out of bounds. No. Did they step out of bounds or did he give yeah. him a foul? No, Schofield stepped out of bounds. McCray back in. Offense, defense for, uh, for uh, Nick Ogelli. Yep. That's what he's doing right now, offense, defense. 20 seconds to go in this first half, 31-25 in favor of the Bulldogs. Gunthrub, three forts, now mid, now on the side of Crosby. Gunthrub down to 11 seconds, shot clock is off. Acosta, nice move, left low post, it's good by Acosta, his first points of the game. 31-27, four seconds to go, Crosby leads. McCray down to two, down to one. Benjamin for the buzzer, it's short. And that's how the first half concludes. 31-27, Bulldogs lead over the Holy Cross Crusaders. We'll send it back to the station. When we come back, we'll have Jason Robinson from the Crosby Bulldogs, ex-Crosby Bulldog, I should say. He'll join us right here on 1320 WATR and 97.7 FM.
I got to tell you, this crowd seems a little timid. Yeah. I, I remember the crowd being a little bit, you know, louder. I know it's only game two as far as the season, yeah. you know, in general, but it's, you know, like you said, it's been a little bit slow. The defense has been good for Crosby. Yeah. What's been your analysis? Um, I just think they're they're being too timid with the rock. They need to definitely keep driving. Mm -hmm. But there's too many jump shots. People aren't people are wide open. Mm -hmm. They're not looking. So I got to ask you about this Ellis kid, Curtis Ellis. I yeah. know you know him very well. Yeah. And I was telling Dave, he is not just a facilitator, but he's making plays. And even though he's not scoring a lot, no. he's creating plays. And he's, his vision is just so unique. Definitely. Talk to me about him. Um, Curtis is a good kid. Um, he, he could do a little bit of everything for real. Right now, I don't like the, the tech call after the dunk. I think they should have let that go. We definitely would have got the crowd more into everything. But, I mean, yeah, he's a good kid. Really long. Mm -hmm. So, I definitely think he needs to step it up defensively a little bit more. You know, Crosby came out, like I mentioned, 20 nothing run, and they've been able to keep the lead, as, as I mentioned, 31-27. I want to talk about yourself a little bit, about less than six minutes ago with the halftime. Chris Starnes alongside the former Crosby Bulldog and Billy Finn Award winner Jason Robinson. Uh, I know there was an opportunity for you to play at a prep school, and the prep school uh, did not end up having the team anymore, Notre Dame West Haven Prep. And I know you were searching to try to find a home. So for people who may not know where you went and were wondering what happened with you after that, after Crosby and then the prep school. Yeah. Where did you end up going? Uh, right now I'm at, I'm at New York Military Academy doing a post grad year there. It's going good. Great coaching, great people up there. Great scenery. It's really nice. What's been some of the things that you've been able to, you know, learn being at the prep level? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> Where to start, right? Yeah. <laughs> Playing off two, talking more, definitely. Um, it's just definitely like a whole adjustment coming from the NBL, moving uh, up to the to the next set. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a little different, different like play styles. It's a little slower pace than I'm used to, but so far it's going so good though. Now when you say slower pace, is that kind of credit to the NBL and to obviously the Waterbury Town? Because as you've noticed, it's a lot of high pace, you know, as we mentioned, the trap. It, it, you got to be able to be on your feet and your head on a swivel. Always, always, yeah. It's not a lot of trapping at the next at the next level. It's a lot of zone, man, not as much pressing, but definitely a, a huge culture difference yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know, one thing I got to tell you, Jason, I think it, I, I knew you were going to have success wherever you played, at a prep school, whatever division you played at, because yeah. the growth you made from your freshman year, and obviously you were part of the COVID year as well. Yeah. Really wonky, 10 games, the whole thing was just odd. Yeah. But the growth that you made and not even so much your offensive game, right? But the fact that you were able to continue your offensive prowess yeah. with your defense still being strong, because a lot of times you got to give and take. Yeah. Either give great defense and your offense is going to be okay or yeah. the other. Yeah. How were you able to sustain that? Because there were games that I would look at you and you were you were gassed. Yeah. But that's because you left everything on the court. How did you prepare yourself so well? Um, it just started off in the off season. Off season, a lot of running on mm -hmm. the track for sure. Just a lot of working out, a lot of playing basketball. Mm -hmm. Just trying to give it my all. It was my last year. I'm trying to figure out somewhere to go, basically. So I just gave it, gave it, my, gave it my, my all for sure. Now you mentioned to me that um, you made what second team for the tournament, correct? Yeah. The most uh, recent one. The Kingswood Oxford tournament. I got, I got second team. How was tournament. that? Talk to me about that moment. Um, it was, it was more of a like, it was definitely a, a little bit of a surprise. I have. I good first game but the rest of the two I, I picked it up for sure just really grateful to be named to the second team all tournament team for sure is there anything from that tournament because I'm sure there were a lot of talented players a part of that is there anything because you mentioned about kind of the pace and having to talk more yeah. is there anything from that tournament specifically that you said to yourself after it was done like wow I'm glad I went through that um, definitely we, uh, we lost two games to, uh, by two. One okay. was a buzzer beater and one was a tough loss. So it's just a lot of improvement coming back into break for sure mm -hmm. that we, we look forward to. Jason, before I let you go, 222 left of the halftime. Chris Sarnes alongside Jason Robinson. Give me your uh, preview for the second half. What can we expect from Crosby? Oh, what do you man. think? I, you know, I, know, I know a little too much. I know the secrets. So I think, I think 
we're going to press more, get him to turn the ball over and get this lead up a little bit more, for sure. Also, what do you think of Coach Al Jelly, really quick? It's my guy, man. <laughs> Great guy, <laughs> great coach, man, the greatest to do it, man, for sure. Jason, I appreciate you. Be well. Thank Keep you. doing your thing. Yep, have a good one. Send it back to the station. We come back starting in the second half right here from the Crosby Palace as it's 31-27. Crosby leads Holy Cross Crusaders. Right here on 1320 WHR, 97.7 the back. Again. So Holy Cross is Gunther, Parker, also have Roscoe, Perone, and Acosta. Holy Cross has Melendez, Ellis, Stewart, Benjamin, and Blackman. And so third quarter's underway. Holy Cross went on an 11 uh, a 10 0 spur, and then Crosby went on a 20 0 spur. So it's it's been uh, a game of spurts so far. We've got first a foul. foul. Yep, first foul, and that's going to be on Melendez. Teams first. I've got him down for three, and that's going to force him out. McCray back in. Yeah. And all Joey's like, I mean, what are you going to do, huh? <laughs> it happens. <laughs> you think he's going to Spartans after this? Hold on. Ellis driving, Boom. slams it hard with the right hand. He's got eight. And that time, no T. I think he learned, Dave. Oh, well, yeah, he learned, you know. Oh, listen. They're telegraphing these passes like unbelievable. Crosby is just picking them off left and right. Loose ball went back and forth. It's going to be Ellis spinning through, looking, looking, and he finds McCray back over to Ellis. Three fourths of the court and Benjamin, a whistle blown. Kirk's going to have a conversation, trying to see what exactly the conversation is with Reno and Vanacore. 7.28 to go in this third again. quarter. Yep, shot clock. 33-27, Crosby leads over Holy Cross. As you mentioned, Crosby, a 20-0 run. Holy Cross didn't score for over six minutes at one point in that yeah. second quarter. But they scored the last four points of the, of yes. the half, which yes. gave them some sort of momentum. And also, too, Dave, we also didn't mention uh, at the end of the first quarter, Obasu has been still out, and he's not coming back. No, he's not. And that is a real shame. Yeah, I don't know what he did. He may have tore a little bit, bit of cartilage or something in there on that. But he's in pain. You can obviously see that. Benjamin near the top. Now McCray. McCray guarded by two. A little bit of a trap and sells from Holy Cross. And a reach in foul on Holy Cross. That's going to be on number 12. That's Roscoe, his third team's first of this third quarter. Well, I know Don Tinker is up there. Uh, well, now he's down here. <laughs> evaluating the officials. With Dan Scavone. Yeah, with Dan Scavone. And uh, he better give these guys a good grade because they've been really consistent. That's the first half. They've been really consistent so far. Um, I haven't seen them miss a single call. Benjamin gets over to McCray. Have Ellis, Stewart, and Benjamin. Or correction, that's a Blackman, rather. Said Benjamin twice. Now Benjamin has it, number four. There's only one. Gets it over to Ellis, guarded by Gunthrub. 
Crosby going right to left on your dial, attacking. Holy Cross defending left to right. Stewart near the top from the free throw line, gets it outside, three by Crosby, he's no good. Missed by McCray, one and done is Crosby, and now we have a reach-in foul on the Bulldogs. Now don't say Benjamin again, I know you got money on your mind, <laughs> all right? You got them bennies on your mind there, Chris. Hey, with a oh, wedding coming oh, up, oh, it's yeah. always on my mind. I, yeah. Fouls on Blackman, his second team second of this third quarter. 37, rather 33 to 27, Crosby leads over the Holy Cross with 6.40 to go in the third. Gunthrop gets it over to Parker. Parker outside, high arcing three is a swish. Courtesy of Orozco, he's got seven. That's five made threes by Holy Cross. It cuts the lead down to three for the Bulldogs. Three by Benjamin, trying to answer back. He misses the three. Ellis gets the offensive rebound, give and go to Benjamin. He missed the bunny in the left low post. And now it's going to be a jump ball between Crosby and Holy Cross. Nice job by Harge. Man, a uh, jump ball with Stewart in there. Man, he a big <laughs> boy. He may have a better beer than me. I think so. I, I know so. And the jump ball is courtesy of Crosby, so they keep the possession behind the Holy Cross basket. Kinsey inbounding, floats it high over to Ellis. Now Blackman, 33 on the shot clock. Ellis, catch and shoot, three, a little bit too hard off the back iron. Parker, bringing it up for Holy Cross. Outside, Gunthrop has made three threes, and it stays at three threes as he missed one off the back iron. Parker gets the steal away from McCray. It's too easy for Parker. He's got nine. And the lead is down for one for Crosby. He under was, six to play in the third. He was just sitting there waiting for that. You know? He was. He was, he was hawking behind the, the player. He knew the, the pass was coming, and that was too easy for him. Kinsey, as Melendez waiting to come back in. Kinsey, Gunther giving some space. Ellis in the right corner will dribble a couple times. Guarded by Harge, now Kinsey. Kinsey again, makes a move near the left elbow. Parker trying to go for the steal, drawing three. Ellis wide open for three, missed the three. McCray gets the offensive rebound, give and go to Ellis. Goes in hard, no whistle blown. Stewart trying to fight for it, that's hard for Holy Cross. Here they go, the Crusaders. That's Acosta, and it's blocked by Blackman. What a play. Great play by Blackman coming up there. And then Perone fouled on the, on the ensuing uh, Fast break, which really was a good foul because Crosby had numbers. How about, what a heads up play by Crosby on the attacking end to draw three and leave Ellis wide open. I know they missed the three there, but that was pretty, that but, was pretty cool. But Ellis missed the guy underneath the basket wide open. I know. He should have, he should have thrown it to him. I was trying to look at the glass half full. I know you were. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking from a coaching per, uh, perspective and saying, you know, you need to have percentages. And percentages get the bunny down low. Now we got an offensive foul Go called on number zero on Blackman. That says third, team's third. Looks like we may be seeing Taylor and Anderson at some point as well. As the fouls are starting to creep up, you've got three on Melendez, three on Blackman, two on Kinsey. Also got a T on L, something to watch too. Yeah. Under five to play in the third, one point lead for Crosby. Gunthrop, three, good! And Holy no, Cross no. regains the lead. 12 for Gunthrop, all from the three point line. It's a two point lead for Holy Cross. Blackman to Kinsey. Kinsey will dribble a couple times to the top of the key. Guarded by Acosta, top of the key three. Off the front iron, one and done is Crosby. Here they go on transition. Parker give and go to Acosta. And it's a five nothing run for Holy Cross on the last two possessions. Four for Acosta, 37 to 33 Holy Cross. 4.25 to go in this third quarter. Ellis working on Perone. And that's going to be a foul on Crosby. Actually, no, they're gonna say stepped out of bounds. It's a 10-2 run by Holy Cross. I'm telling you, a game of spurts. And here's what's happening. Coach Nick uh, Augelli's gonna take a timeout. And Paul Vance is in the house. It's always good when J.P. Vance is in the J.P. House. Vance is in the house. We'll send it back to the station quick and come out this timeout, as it was called by Crosby, a full timeout. 421 to go in the third, 33 to 37 in favor of the Holy Cross Crusaders. Right here on the
10-0 run by Holy Cross. Again, it's been a game of streaks back and forth. And it just very, uh, all right, easy for you to say, Dave. <laughs> well, why don't you try, stop, slow down. <laughs> It just may be he who streaks last wins. That there we so, go. So <laughs> funny. <laughs> Harge catching shoe from the corner. No, missed the three. Gunther fighting for it. It's Ellis. Ellis has been around the entire court, but he lost the basketball. Acosta trying to keep it alive, but can't as it was thrown away. Ellis, I'm telling you, if there was an award for effort, Ellis has to get that in this game. You know you need a player like that on every team. You do. You need that player that's going to just be all over the court, ball hawking, you know, playing defense, uh, you, you know, running the, the transition. You need someone like that. Who was that on your team back in the day? Um, Jack Morgan. Kanai Glenn guarded by two, trying to get the ball, and we have a foul called on Holy Cross. I think that's going to be on Harge. We'll wait for the number. And yeah. it will be, yes, on Harge. That's his second team's third. 37 to 33, Holy Cross leads Crosby. 3.51 to go in the third. Parker's talking with the official because hands were up in the air, and he's like, okay, how do we get this foul when our hands are in the air? What do we need to do differently not to get a foul called on us? Kinsey to Ellis, and he threw it away. And again, you do not like unforced errors out there, unforced turnovers. Melendez is saying the same thing. I mean, Kinsey's only, I mean, a junior, still pretty young, but again, he's played a lot of varsity the last year plus. Yeah. All right, now, see if the trap's going to come up. No Melendez trap. guarding Parker, finding opening outside, Walk. and he walked. Walk. Yes, that was hard. Substitution, McCray is in, and Ellis. No, it's going to be Kinsey. So Kinsey is out, McCray back in. So Crosby has Melendez, McCray, Ellis, Blackman, Hold on. Oh, Anderson's also in. I apologize. So we've got Melendez, McCray, Raquan Anderson, Blackman. And now Crosby has gone four minutes without scoring. So weird, huh? It's a weird game. We've got a steal by Holy Cross. That's Parker in the middle. Parker trying to coast to coast, and he finishes in the left low post. He's got 11. 39-33, a six-point lead for Holy Cross. Parker trying to go for a steal. Nice move by Melendez. Gets by three, and he finishes at the cup. What a nice move by DJ Melendez. He's got 11. He sliced and diced through multiple defenders. He's been the spark of this Crosby team so far. Parker guarded by Melendez. Each have 11. Walk. Like you said, Dave, 2.57 to go in the third, 39-35, Holy Cross leads. It's been big time runs. It really hasn't been like six to four, 10 to five really. It's been more of like 20 to nothing, 10 to two. Those kind of runs for both teams. Well, it was a 12-0 run before Crosby scored. Crosby, has, that was their first bucket since 7.48 of the, uh, of the quarter. And that's only 12 seconds into the quarter. And then they didn't score at all after that until just recently. Definitely a fun game. 39-35, Holy Cross leads, and we got a foul. And that's going to be on number two. That's Gunthrop, his first, team's fourth. One more and two free throws for the remainder of the quarter. Fouls are piling up on Holy Cross right now. Yep, you got two on Perone, three on Roscoe, two on Harge. Only one on Parker, one on Acosta. Ooh, ooh, that was close. Tiptoeing on the backcourt there. Blackman to Melendez, top of the arc, three. Missed the three. Parker gets a defensive rebound. One and done is Holy Cross, rather Crosby. Acosta will finish in the left low post. Nice pass from Parker. Acosta with six. 41-35, Holy Cross. Melendez to McCray, now Ellis. Ellis swerving by two, and he's fouled in the right low post. I think they got either Perone or Parker. They got Perone. Oh, that's his fourth, isn't it? I have three. May have missed one, but that's definitely a foul on Perone. That's two free throws for Ellis. Crosby, five of eight in the first half from the charity stripe. Ellis with eight points. These will be the first free throws of this quarter. Yes, that as well, with 2.26 to go in the third. First free throw by Ellis. Good. Six of nine from the stripe is Crosby. Ellis now with nine points. As Perone is out. And for the first time is Sean Albert, number 15. Second free throw by Ellis is no good. And it's going to be off of Crosby trying to keep alive was Anderson. 
Now Crosby's going to go back to their trapping. 2.25 to go in the third. 41-36, Holy Cross. Round tree spinning by Ellis. Had it deflected by Anderson. It goes to Blackman's hands for Crosby. Melendez working on two. Can't make the bunny. Anderson gets the offensive rebound, and they call a jump ball in the left low post. Good move by Parker there to grab that ball. Otherwise, that would have been an easy bucket for Crosby underneath there. And about, the Holy Cross yeah. will get the possession. Melendez again getting by the defenders, too. Just quick. couldn't finish. Yeah, he was quick. That's tough to finish on that. Especially over two. Yeah. 2.09 to go in the third, 41 to 36, Holy Cross. Melendez on Parker. Holy Cross going left to right in your dial. Crosby defending right to left. Albert, That's nice pass. pass. Round three with the finish. That's Albert, the assist. That's how you break that trap. Exactly. That was textbook right there. Round three with the points. His first two points of the game. 43 to 36, Holy Cross. Ellis, and now Holy Cross with a trap of themselves. And that's going to be a timeout. timeout. Yes, timeout on Crosby. We'll keep it right here. 142 to go in the third. 43 to 36, Holy Cross leading over the Crosby Bulldogs. Chris Saunders alongside Dave Grant. It seems like Holy Cross is now giving Crosby a little bit of the trapping medicine. Well, you know, you got to do something to create offense. They weren't scoring very much towards the end of the second quarter, so you got to adjust somewhere, and, and that's what Coach Olson did. He said, okay, so we're not getting very much productivity in our set offense. Yep. Let's see if we can do the same thing they're doing. Let's do some trapping. Let's try to create some, some transition baskets, and that's what they've been doing. He also adjusted. If you noticed on that last time, it went from the, the corner over here down to the corner, into the middle, down to the box. That's how you break this press. That's how you break a trapping press. You get a layup every time. Like you said, it starts at the top of the key, yep. and then you kind of work your way around, almost like swerving through a zone defense, in a sense. Yep. But it's yeah. not a zone defense, but kind of swerving you're, you're through You're just it. getting the players yes. to move. You're getting that thing to shift. And when it shifts, someone's going to be open. It's like, it's like chess, almost. Yep. Benjamin inbounding. Can I Glenn's in as long, or rather, as well as Melendez and Blackman and Ellis. Ellis in the corner, gets it to Blackman on the right elbow, and, and Blackman threw it away. There. And Coach DeVito, one of the assistant coaches and JV head coach said, pick your head up and look. Look before you throw. Yes. Gunther been mounting, has Acosta, Parker, Roundtree, and Albert. Albert guarded by Blackman. Now Gunther has the basketball still on the Holy Cross side. 30 on the shot clock, 130 on the game clock. 43-36, Holy Cross leads. High pass over to Roundtree. Roundtree was fouled. Wide open underneath there. Foul was on Ellis. I have him down for two. Coach Ogelli is saying that the Holy Cross player stepped in before he threw the ball, and he's yelling at the ref, you were right there, he'd call it. Now, I didn't see it, so I can't say if it happened or not, but that's what he was arguing about. This will be the first two free throws for Holy Cross in this third quarter. And for Roundtree, the game. And he misses the first free throw. Holy Cross, three of eight from the line. Roundtree stays with two points. The score, 43-36, Cross leads. 124 remaining in the third. Second free throw is no good. So Holy Cross, three of nine from the stripe. Ellis, guarded by two, Albert and Parker. Ellis gets outside to Benjamin. Now Blacksman working around to Melendez. Melendez swerving through, gets the foul. Nice job by Melendez. 112 to go in the third. He is just penetrating. He's cutting in that zone there. And, and listen, he's, been, he's done pretty good from the free throw line, hasn't he? He has made all four free throws. He'd be your favorite player. <laughs> well, didn't I just say he's done pretty good from the free throw line? I noticed. <laughs> First now, free throw. Now don't jinx him, right? I didn't dance him. Makes his first, 7 of 11 is Crosby from the stripe. The points continue to add up for young DJ Melendez. He has 12 points with that made free throw, trying to go for 13, and he does. Home court bounce. 8 of 12 from the stripe is Crosby. That, that alone is keeping them in this game, especially with their streaks that they've had. 112 to go in the third, 43 to 38 is the score. Holy Cross leads, full court press. Ellis able to get the steal, nice move. Melendez can't make the bunny, had the ball for a second, then it's taken away by Gunthrop. Gunthrop is going to retreat for a second, allow his offense to move up. Parker gets the ball to Acosta. Acosta 
to Parker. Nice move, Parker with the points. 45-38, Holy Cross. Ellis gets by Acosta. Outside the Blackman from the top of the key. The rainbow is good by Blackman. He's got four. Five made threes by Crosby in the game. It's a four point lead for Holy Cross with 36 seconds to go in the third. Acosta off his knee, it. right to the hands of Blackman to Melendez. Melendez goes up and it was fouled. And the foul is going to be on Gunthrop. That's his second. Two free throws for Melendez, who, if you are a Crosby fan, if you're listening on 1320 WHR, or if you're on the simulcast, because we're on YouTube as well, uh, you want your player in Melendez at the line because he has made all the free throws that he's attempted. Now, you're going to jinx him, aren't you? I probably did. Come on, Melendez, don't, don't do this to me. <laughs> Takes a breath, bends the knees. He's got too good a form. 9 of 13. Now, when you say that, Dave, about the form, what makes it so, so smooth? It's got to be a rhythm. It's either you go 1-2 or 1-2-3, and he's got a 1-2-3 going. And as long as you have that rhythm, you know, and, and you follow through with your shot and bend your, your legs, it should go in every time. Crosby, 9 of 13 from the stripe. Second free throw is no good. 9 of 14. And we've got a foul on Crosby. And that'll be shooting. Yes, it will. And the foul was on Crosby Stewart, who just three. came into the game. That's his second. So the score, 45-42. The lead is three for Holy Cross. 25.8 seconds to go in the third. Chris Saunders alongside Dave Grant. Officials have had a nice job in this game. Steve Kirk, Ray Vanacore, and Chris Reno. Parker's at the line. He's made both free throws in this game thus far. Awfully quiet. Very quiet. First free throw. Good. As the leading scorer and the leader of the team, you've got to make your free throws. Mm -hmm. Lead by example. Now, Holy Cross does not have anybody at the charity stripe on either corner. So they're anticipating, again, probably not a missed free throw from Parker. He's always pretty good. But just in case, they want to have the defense retreat. Second free throw. Good. 47 to 42. 25 seconds to go in the third. Holy Cross leads by five. Uh, Jelly wants one shot, he said, one shot. Shot clock is off. Down to 17. Benjamin to Ellis. To Kanai Glenn. Down to 13. Blackman guarded by Acosta. Down to eight. Driving in is Benjamin. Was fouled and counted. Almost as good as a three. Has a chance to make it. A three-point play. Fouls on Albert, his second. Nice move by Benjamin to kind of make a reverse switch hands. Nice cut to the hoop. Now, Dave, if I told you that Jaden Benjamin's father was in the same class as LeBron James and was a five-star, his dad averaged a double-double. 20 points, 20 rebounds in high school. Where? I have to find out where exactly. It was not in Connecticut, but okay. his dad. I mean, imagine that. 20-20, yeah. and he makes the free throw. 10 of 15 from the line is Crosby. Down to five seconds. The lead is two for Holy Cross. Parker to Albert. Albert on the dribble. Was hit. No foul call. Parker. And they're going to count it. They Parker count the basket the on Parker. So Parker makes the basket right before the buzzer went off. It's 49 to 45. Holy Cross leads. You better stay here on 1320 WATR or on YouTube because this fourth quarter is shaping up to be quite a matchup between Crosby and Holy Cross. So we'll see you in just a few. Right here on 1320 WATR, 97.7 FM.
We're back here at the Crosby Palace. Start the final quarter, we think, of this game. I mean, Dave, why not have, if we have overtime, I mean, you'll be gone for a couple weeks, so let's have a, let's extend the fun with you, right? If that's what you want, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta remember if I took my blood pressure medicine today or not. Oh, this is true. Five seconds off here in this fourth quarter as Crosby will begin with the basketball. 49-45 Holy Cross leads. Kanai Glenn floats it high over to Kinsey. Kinsey over to Ellis in the corner. Crosby going right to left on your dial in their home white uniforms. Holy Cross defending in their away green with yellow trim on the sides. Kanai Glenn head deflected by Albert, but to the hands of Blackman. He missed the putback and gets the third, and you're going to count it for another three-point play. Blackman just staying on that ball down there. Not giving up whatsoever. That's his third on Albert. Blackman had four through three quarters. The lean score for both teams for 14 points. That's Melendez off the bench. You got 17 from Parker. Quiet 17. Very quiet 17. Because he's been passing the ball a lot. Yes, Blackman, the three-point play is good. So 11 of 16 from the line is Crosby. And the free throw being made. Blackman now with seven. The lead is down to one for Holy Cross with 7.28 to go in the game, we think. Parker lost the basketball. Blackman floats it up high. It's thrown away by Parker. Holy Cross has the numbers. Albert on the cut, and he gets fouled. He'll be at the line for two. And the foul is going to be on Blackman. That's his fourth. Teams, first of this fourth quarter. Yeah, they don't want to lose him right now. Blackman's been a force on the boards. Albert, one of the many players on this Holy Cross team that played almost, per, you know, mainly JV, makes the first free throw. Holy Cross, four of ten. Quite an adjustment for this Holy Cross team, graduating Peyton Mullins, Joe Dane, Jerron Fordham, and Zach Blasky. Yeah, that was a lot of talent to lose. Oh, yeah. Second free throw missed. One of two is Albert. Holy Cross, four of 11 from the line. Two-point lead for Crosby. 7.13 to go in the game. Melendez drawing, finding Blackman overhead, and he gets it, and we're tied 50-all. Nice assist by Melendez. Great give-and-go play by Crosby. Absolutely fantastic. Outside, Gunthrop, now Perone. Perone looking for Gunthrop, he finds him. Outside, over to Roscoe, now Parker. Parker looking to Roscoe again. Nice ball movement by Holy Cross. The shot missed by Albert Kanai Glenn. And at a first second, they call a reach in on Holy Cross. That's going to be, I think, on Perone by the reaction. I'll wait. I'll still yep. wait, and I got it. Yep. It's on Perone, his fourth. Now, now, that's, uh, now that's four. Now, JP Vance talking to uh, Dan Scavone and uh, Don Tinker, as you know. Yes. Wonder what that conversation is like. <laughs> Probably asking, so uh, what'd you think of that call? Yeah. Vance is like, well, I would tell you as a coach. Yeah. As you said, right? Who's thought, the official that said if they had our seat, they would never miss a call? Jose Dos Santos. Yes. Great guy. Yeah. Great electrician, too. Does all my, he's an electrician. Yep. And he does work in my house also. We're tied 50 all, 628 to go in the game. We think. Can I, Glenn? Ooh, over to Ellis. There. McCray, like you said, may have gotten away with a walk. Melendez, nice pick by Blackman. Melendez spins, right hand, and we got the lead. Crosby has it. 16 for Melendez, a coming out party here at the Crosby Palace. Six minutes to go in the game. McCray gets the steal, that's Ellis. Over to Melendez, give and go to Ellis. Unselfish, and Ellis gets the points. The assist, Melendez. Ellis has 11. Four point lead for Crosby. Parker to Acosta, and count it. Foul on Kanai Glenn. Team second. Acosta with eight, trying to make it nine. 5.52 remaining in the game. How about Melendez? He could have easily have taken it himself, but he gave the assist to Ellis. He was said, hey, you got a better shot. He was looking for him to dunk is what he was looking for. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Free he, throw made. He just didn't know the other guy was behind him. If so, that was still pretty cool. Yep. One point lead for Crosby, 5.46 to go in the game. Melendez got guarding, rather, getting over two and gets it for another possible three-point play. Saying a lot of that tonight, Dave. 
Melendez, I'm telling you, I told you by the by the mid year he's going to yep. be starting. Cross foul number 15, Sean Albert. That was on Albert, his fourth. Melendez at the line for a possible three point play. His 18 points was slicing through defenders. He's almost asking for that, like the the Holy Cross defenders to come after him. His free throw. As he takes a breath. One, two, three. Bam. It's good. 12 of 17. 19 for Melendez, surpasses what he had against Naugatuck, which was 12. 435 remaining in the game. 57-53. And the three is made by Parker. He cuts it just a little bit. Just like that. Down to a one-point lead for Crosby. That's now 20 for Elijah Parker, the junior. Blackman swings it around. Ellis open for three. Swish! Curtis Ellis bangs in a three. Great ball movement by Crosby that time to get the wide open shot. 60 to 56, Crosby, Gunther trying to answer back. He can't, Blackman gets the ball for a second. He lost it, it was stolen by Albert. Parker has it, he missed the bunny. It's hit up high, that's McCray. McCray gets by Parker. Three fourths now on the side of Holy Cross. McCray on the floater. He missed it, it's loose. It goes out of bounds. As a player's down for a second, that's Ellis. And a substitution as Benjamin will be in. Kanai Glenn is out. This is what Crosby wants Holy Cross to do, to get into a transition game with them, because Crosby is deadly in the transition. Holy Cross has been pretty good tonight, but not as deadly as Crosby is. Parker will bring it up the point guard over to Gunthrop. 4.40 to go in the game. Out of bounds, last touch by Crosby. Four point lead for the Bulldogs here at the Crosby Palace. We'll have an official's timeout. Steve Kirk has to tie his shoe. I mean, the transition game's been so quick for Crosby. Kirk uh, has to retie his shoes. Uh, you know, he ran out of his uh, laces there. <laughs> Gunther inbounding over to Roscoe. Roscoe, one bounce pass to Parker outside the three-point line. Parker's on the drive. Gunther moving from the left corner. Good sits. And it's a one-point lead for the Bulldogs. Gunther has made all of his points from the three-point line. He's got 15. 60 to 59. 420 remaining in the game. Melendez no. opening. Blackman outside to McCray. McCray giving go to Melendez. Ellis from the right corner. No off the front iron. Acosta has it. Defensive rebound. Oh, that's got to be a foul. And if that's a foul on Blackman, he's done. That is on Blackman. And he's done. I'm sorry, that was a good call. That was a good call. He was all over him. So his day ends, Blackman with nine. That's a big, big miss that to is, lose him in this game. He's oh, been a monster on the boards. He has. Gunther will be inbounding behind the Crosby basket, rather behind their own basket, I should say. Let's see who comes in for Blackman. Could it be Stewart? Could it be Schofield? I would think he'd go with size. He'll go with Kanai Glenn. Glenn's got two personal fouls. One point lead for Crosby with 4.08 to go in the game. I mean, hey, the JV game went to overtime. Could we potentially have a back-to-back? -back? You're just dying to have an overtime game, aren't you, Chris? I love spending time with you. <laughs> You're like, I just want to go to Florida already. <laughs> <laughs> Parker. Tarasco, three-fourths on the Crosby side. Gun through about, uh, rather, outside the three-point line. He was open for a second. Acosta. Now to Roscoe, Parker, high arc three, missed the three, one and done his Holy Cross. I'm surprised he took that. That was a little bit out of his range. Glenn, getting by two, now three, and he draws the foul on Albert. Albert, all he had to do was hold his position, and it would have been a charge, but he moved. I've got five on Albert. Can I have That's five. Two shots. So yeah. he is out, so he'll finish with one point. And the bench is not very deep for Holy Cross as Kanai Glenn will be at the line for two. Crosby is 12 of 17 from the stripe. <coughs> Excuse me. 346 to go in this game. 60 to 59. Crosby up by one. Dave, for people who are just tuning in or maybe went to have some hot chocolate really quick, catch us up a little bit. It's been a game of streaks. Both, both teams have been streaking back and forth left and right. I mean, the scoring is so skewed, it's not funny. You know, uh, Holy Cross won the first quarter 14-6, then Crosby won the second quarter 25-13, and 
and then Holy Cross wins the third quarter, 22-14. So it's it's just been streaking back and forth. But so far, this quarter has been pretty darn close between the two teams, and that's why we've got just a one-point game right now. Crosby at the line for two. Can I Glenn's first free throw? Good. 13 of 18 from the stripe are the Bulldogs. Against Naugatuck, they were 13 of 22. Right now, they have the same amount of made free throws. Doing a little better from this charity stripe. And there it is again, 14 of 19. Glenn with five. The lead, 62-59. Three-point lead for the Bulldogs. 3.40 to go in the game. Perone to Parker. Now Gunther, Bacasa in the right low post. Moving the ball around into the paint. And Perone, travel. travel. You saw that before anybody else did. Right idea. You just got to either put the ball down or go up right away. And he just took the steps. Kinsey inbounding to Melendez, who has 19 points. Melendez to Kinsey. 325 to go in the game. Three point lead for Crosby. Benjamin, can I Glenn from the left corner? No, it's a little bit off kilter. One and done are the Bulldogs. Parker on transition to Perone. Perone had a tip for a second. It's loose. Parker gets the ball. He was fouled. Parker at the line for two. Parker stayed with it. That's what a good player does. You shoot your shot and just chase after it right away. Parker at the line for two. And, and from now on, any foul, the rest of this game, we're shooting two shots. Well, we got 14 fouls on each. Yep. So we need one more. That's what I said. Oh, oh yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Good point. I apologize, I was wrong. <laughs> Six of 13 is Holy Cross from the line. Kinsey is out. Parker is definitely going to be, as far as the boards are concerned, he's been a problem tonight. And that's a good thing for Holy Cross. Second free throw, good. Has not missed. You could tell he was taught well by his father. Yes. His, his dad was a pretty good basketball player, right? <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> One point lead for the Bulldogs. Three minutes to go in the game. McCray working on Parker. He slipped as he tried to make the pass. And they said it was off of the Bulldogs. And if only they had replay, may have uh, switched that, but it stays with Holy Cross. Yeah, we, don't, we don't have that in high school. No, we do not. Floats it out to Perone. They break the trap for a second. Acosta drawing. Off the hands of Melendez. It goes out of bounds. Stays on the side of the Bulldogs. Possession only cross. Lucky it went out of bounds. That was telegraphed. That was going to be off to the races if that yep. pass went through. Holy Cross attacking left to Ryan your dial. Acosta inbounding to Parker. First game for Holy Cross, the second for the Bulldogs in the early part Ooh. of the season. Ooh, he was so close to backcourt. Yes, there. he was. Perone, left he elbow. Yes, he did. And even Olsen said the same thing. Same exact thing that you said. Yeah. And that's going to force Perone to come out. Harge is back in, the sophomore. Well, you can't have him traveling in there. You're no. breaking the press. That's where you want the ball. And, and, and now you've got to capitalize on it. You can't just turn it over. And Holy Cross being down by one doesn't help. Yep. Can I Glenn in the corner? 27 on the shot clock, 2.30 on the game clock. 62-61 Bulldogs. Chris Saunders alongside Dave Grant here from the Crosby Palace. And we've got a foul on Gunthrub. His third. Two free throws coming for Melendez. And that's a... That's a pretty heads up play to kind of know when to, when to draw that. I would like to hear your thoughts on that, Dave. DJ Melendez, that was a great job. <laughs> I'm just sitting there watching this. He knew that guy was there and he just drew the contact. I mean, that was a silly foul. Melendez, his first free throw here. He's got Good. almost 20 points now, doesn't he? Give me one second, 15 of 20 is Crosby from the stripe. He's exactly at 20. Looking for 21 here. Free throw. Off the Good. bench. Yes, exactly. Off the bench. Told you he's eventually going to be starting. 
64-61. Three-point lead for the Bulldogs. 2.15 remaining in the game. And a reach-in foul on Kanai Glenn. That's his third. Now we'll have two free throws for the rest of the game as both teams have five team fouls. And he's lucky that foul was called. He's sitting there waiting for the ball to get to him. You don't do that. You go to the ball. You go to the ball, you're going to get fouled every time, and there's not going to take off to the races on you. Holy Cross, 7 of 14 from the stripe. Harge has not scored in the game. He does have two personal fouls. Only a sophomore. Makes the first. Nice form. 8 of 15. Both teams have been pretty good from the line. 15 of 20 for Crosby. And then you've got Holy Cross, 8 of 15. Look for a timeout here if it goes in. Second free throw is no, no good. good. I jinxed him. Kanai Glenn, a defensive rebound. 8 of 16 from the stripe is Holy Cross. And then a turnover by Crosby. Parker creating out there defensively. Trying to say, hey, we need to get this ball back. They need to tie it up. You know, we got two minutes left in the game. We got to start getting some momentum. As all Jelly just said to Kanai Glenn, bring the ball up. He was playing with it too much. Yeah. Two minutes to go in the game. Two point lead for the Bulldogs. Timeout. And a timeout called by Holy Cross. We'll keep it right here. Holy Cross. This has turned out, I mean, we thought, again, the beginning of the game, not a lot of energy from the crowd, right? But the, the ebbs and flows, the runs have been nuts, and the energy you can see, or rather can't see. I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see, but if you're listening to myself and Dave Grant, 1320 WATR, there's been a lot of action going, and you could see why these two teams are highly respected amongst the NVL, right? They're, they're, they're both coached well. They both have good talent on their team. Um, again, you know, I, I don't know who you would turn to to say there was the... The, the spark for Holy Cross to compliment Parker right now. It's almost been spread out, not, not one person stepping up. Um, and what can I say about Melendez? M Melendez is just, you know, he's, he's, I told you when I first saw him playing in Naugatuck that this kid's gonna start before the end of the year is over. He's off the bench scoring 20 plus points. I mean, that's fantastic for Crosby. Um, we got, what, two minutes left in the game now? Yep. So that's a two minute mark? Yep. What goes on from both sides here now? Possession, possession, possession. Every possession is important. You've got to score yep. every possession. Um, he who stops will probably win this game. And think about it too, Dave. This is only game two of the season. Game one for Holy Cross. Possession, Holy Cross, Gunthrub. Now they spread out and go to their positions. Right. Holy Cross in their green. No more trap, it's contained. That was a bad pass. That's Ellis. Crosby gets the ball, as you heard Dave say. 150 to go in the game. Shot clock at 30. Melendez does have 21 points. Parker, 22 for Holy Cross. Three by McCray. And he doesn't get it. Off the front iron. Ellis gets it for Crosby, a second chance. 135 to go in the game, 30 on the shot clock. Roscoe watching Ellis like a hawk. Ellis. Dribbling with the right hand, three-fourths of the court. Benjamin over to Melendez. Melendez with 21 points. Melendez wearing number two. Acosta guarding. And Acosta gets the foul on Melendez. That's his second. The only reason Acosta got that foul is he brought his arms in like this. When you say that, so you're almost like a flex. Like a flex. Okay. And so that indicated a push. If he had had his arms out in a defensive stance, that would not have been called. And that's what they teach, right? Have your arms out. Yep. Melendez has only missed one free throw. Benz, he has 21. Make it 22. Thirteen. He's twelve of thirteen from the free throw line so far. I like this kid. <laughs> I know you do. Taking a breath, and the free throw is good. Seventeen of twenty-one from the line, and a timeout called. Dave, what are you seeing from Melendez? Melendez is is coming of age. He's showing Coach Jelly that I need to be out there. That I'm going to be one of, if not the leader of this team. That's what he's showing him out there. Um, Full time out on the floor. They're just trying to decide whether which one it was going to be. But that's what he's showing out there. Listen, he got taken out of the Naugatuck game, remember? He got a technical foul. Mentally was just out of it. Was out of the You're game. right. You're right. All right. Yep. Sign of a good coach. 
okay, you don't hold that against the player. He didn't hold it against them. He coached them. He said, okay, you ready? Get back in there, okay? He got back in there, did decent towards the end of the game. Obviously, the last few practices, he's been attentive, obviously, because he's, he's, he's out here and he's lighting it on fire. And, and I, I'm looking at that team and I'm saying, he is the scorer for that team. I think that, see, what you just said right there, Dave, he is becoming, and I understand it's early on in the season, right? We saw against Naugatuck, and then mentally he was out after the tee. Every team needs a need a bucket guy. They need that. And I think coming into this season with the loss of Jason Robinson, the question was, and I mentioned this a couple days ago on Twitter, who is going to be that need a bucket guy on Crosby? Well, through two games, it's kind of hard to not point towards Melendez. I'm pointing towards him, you know? I mean, he's, he's just, he's got a great game out there. And, and he knows how to penetrate and draw the contact also. Yep. And that's very important. And, and, and what's even more important is if you draw the contact, you got to make the free throws, and he's doing that. Roscoe, the lead four for Crosby. 113 to go in the game. Parker, guarded by Melendez. And they call the foul on the court, but it'll be two free throws regardless. Melendez, that's his fourth. Got to be careful. One more and he's done. Cannot afford to lose him if you're a Bulldogs fan. 110 to go in the game. Parker can cut the deficit to two. Now it's going to be interesting to see if both are made by Parker, what defense they come out with. Oh, and Parker misses it. Eight of 17. That's his first missed free throw of this game. And not the right time to miss. No. Second free throw for Parker. Missed the first. Is missed again. Back-to-back -back misses, but Holy Cross keeps the possession. Parker ricocheted off a knee, and they'll say a kick ball off of Crosby. Lucky for Crosby because, I mean, lucky for Holy Cross because Crosby was off to the races. Yep, that would have been an easy two and made the lead even bigger. Currently, a four-point lead would have made it six. That 106 remaining in the game. Not the right time to miss two free throws. No, that's surprising too. Yes, I'm surprised on it. Did you see anything uh, from his form there at all? Just looked a little tired, that's all. Gunther will be inbounding behind the Crosby basket. Holy Cross has Gunther, Parker, Perone, Roscoe, and Acosta. Roscoe, guarded by McCray in the corner. Gunther has been good from three. Missed the three, however. Parker on the putback, missed it. On the second putback, he missed it again. Ball's up high in the corner. It's somehow Stewart, and then Stewart gets thrown to the ground, but the possession should be Crosby. You can't ask for any more. If you're holding Cross, you can't ask for anything else, okay? He should have made those. He's, he missed two free throws, he missed two bunnies. No, they're saying the possession was Holy Cross. Okay. Well, they got a little life left in them. 53 seconds remaining in the game. Four point lead for the Bulldogs. Gunther floats it out to Parker. Now Roscoe, oh. Melendez almost had the steal. Telegraph. Holy Cross retains. Gunther almost lost the handle. Now he's sworn by two. Timeout. Time and they out. call timeout, Holy does Holy Cross. Cross. 45.3 seconds to go in the game. Because he almost traveled on that. Well, you, you could also say, too, that I think it was Benjamin. You could have called the foul on him because I'm not saying he was slapping, but he was trying to punch that ball out. Sure he was. Yeah. We'll keep it right here. 66 to 62. Crosby leads by four. 45.3 seconds to go in the game. Chris Saunders alongside Dave Grant. Dave, what a game to send you off to Florida before the new year. <laughs> I mean, come on, right? This is a great game. Now, Holy Cross, what they got to do here mm -hmm. is they got to get a quick score. Yep, yep. All right? So that Crosby can't run the clock out. They got to go after the shot. They have to have a shot because we have the shot clock now. But they got to get a quick score. It doesn't necessarily have to be a three. It can be just a two-pointer. And then you might want to think about fouling the worst free throw shorter on Crosby to go and, and possibly get the ball back. Gunthrum is inbounding at Parker, Roscoe, Perone, and Acosta. Down to 44 seconds, 25 on the shot clock. Parker with McCray giving him some space. Now Gunthrum back to Parker, down to 20 on the shot clock. Parker slices by two, and they call the foul on Stewart. That's a reach in his third. Parker at the line for two. Too much time went by. Now let's see if Parker can redeem himself and hit these two. 34.4 seconds remaining in the game. The lead is four for Crosby. 
Parker with 22 points. Make it 23. Gunther will switch with Perone at the charity stripe line. He'll be on the left side. So went like this. That means if it goes in, they're going to a diamond and one press. Second free throw. Good. Watch the press now. Diamond and one. Trapping in the corners. 24 for Parker. Here's 34 seconds to go in the game. Benjamin over to McCray. McCray one dribble. McCray picks his head up. Lost the basketball. It's stolen away. Parker near the right post. And he doesn't get it. It's picked up by Benjamin for Crosby. Benjamin gets it over to McCray. Over to Melendez. Melendez down to 17 seconds. Over to Ellis in the corner. Ellis then cannot make the bunny. It's Parker. And a whistle has been blown. A timeout called by Holy Cross. And with 11 seconds to go, it's 66 to 64. Crosby leads by two. You and your overtime call. So, let me ask you a question. Oh, gee. <laughs> your Holy Cross, do you go for the win or you just go for the best shot? See, you're asking me personally, I go for the win. I don't want to go to overtime because here's the thing. You go to overtime, obviously this has been such a physical game. You're at the point right now, and Crosby doesn't want to go to overtime either because now the personal fouls, you've got three on Gunthrop, you've got four on Perone, three on Roscoe. Crosby already has one player fouled out in Blackman. You've got three on Ellis with a T. You've got Stewart with three, Melendez with four, Glenn with three, Kinsey with two. You don't want to go to overtime if you're either team. And let's be honest, Gunthrop has been their most consistent three-point shooter. He scored 15 points. He's made a three in every quarter. He made two in the second quarter. All right, now I'll tell you my view. All right, let me hear it. You go for the best shot. If it's a three and it's wide open, take it for the win. If it's a two and it's wide open, take it for the tie. Better to get a chance in overtime than no chance at all. Let's find out. Holy Cross has Perone, Acosta, Gunthra, Parker, and Roscoe. So can I say for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, put your seats and trays in their upright position. Strap them seatbelts on. We got 11 seconds left in this game, maybe. <laughs> Crosby has Melendez, McCray, Benjamin, Ellis, and Stewart. Holy Cross has to go the full length of the court with 11 seconds to go. They're down by two. Gunther floats her over to Parker. Mid, now three-fourths on the Crosby side. He lost oh. the basketball. It's taken away by Melendez. Melendez was then fouled. And somehow... No, a foul out there. Foul outside. He was fouled outside with 5.5 seconds to go. The foul is going to be on Parker. A rare turnover by an All-Stater two-timer and Elijah Parker. And Melendez is at the line for two. He has a chance to potentially ice the game. He's got to make both free throws. He is 13 of 14 from the line. He's been money from the line. He's got let's, 23 points. Let's see what pressure does. Pressure makes two things, diamonds or coal. Yes. First free throw. Good. Bam. Good. And for the win. 14 of 15. 24 for DJ Melendez here at the Crosby Palace with Anthony Ireland watching. A Crosby great. Where's Anthony? In the corner. Second oh, free throw. Good. There's AI. 15 of 16 is DJ from the line. 25 for DJ Melendez. And it's now a four point lead for Crosby with 5.5 seconds to go. Now Holy Cross has to shoot a quick three and hope they have some time left to be able to foul. And then have a chance to be able to try to win the game back. But there may just not be enough time on the game clock. Crosby's going to give them token defense up front just to make them work to get the ball up so they have to take a rush shot and, th and then not foul. Is there a game that this reminds you of that you've called in the past, Dave? I've done 20 years of games. Did you ask me that question? Come on, go back in the memory bank. I'm sure Allie, Allie's probably like, Dave, you got to remember that game from we, 2008. We, we, we've had some, some really great Sacred Heart Holy Cross matchups that have gone down to the wire. Mm -hmm. um, Crosby and... and, and and Sacred Heart down to the wire. I mean, it's, uh, there's so many. I, I can't think of one specifically. I, the, the one game that I can't think of is, 
is the state tournament game where we thought Sacred Heart was over. Oh, against Windsor. With, yeah. yeah, at Hartford, yep. And they came back, they were down like 14 points with two minutes left and came back and won and the Samson game. And Sampson made the three yep. off the bench. Yep. So Crosby has Melendez, McCray, Stewart, Ellis, and Benjamin. This is kind of that playoff. Remember, Crosby's in Division One. This is the kind of win that, this you know, you're, you're going to be going through this kind of adversity in Division One games in the tournament. Yeah. Parker was saying, I got foul coming down there. You should have called it. <laughs> Perone inbounding over to Roscoe. Down to three. Parker, the Hail Mary three is short. And the Crosby Bulldogs will win against Holy Cross the final 68 to 64. And it's all because of a big time play and player, DJ Melendez. 15 of 16 from the free throw line, 25 points for Melendez. What a job by Crosby and their senior, DJ Melendez off the bench. We'll send it back to the station and wrap things up here from the Crosby Palace. Right here on 1320 WHR 97.7 FM. Holy Cross 25-13 to take a 31-27 halftime lead. Then Holy Cross comes back, outscores Crosby 22-14. And then to end the game, we have, um, oh, what's that? I can't do my math quick enough now. <laughs> <laughs> 15, 23-15, uh, to 15, uh, Crosby outscoring um, Holy Cross to take the win away. Good win, good resilient win by Crosby at the Palace here. Um, uh, all I can say is Melendez, Melendez, Melendez. It, it was... Que bueno, Melendez. <laughs> Un partido fantástico. Good game. Fantastic game. <laughs> I was like, wait, hold on. What, what are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you talk about, again, I said need a bucket guy. Melendez has been that for a game and a half. He was for a half against Naugatuck. He was for this entire, you know, trajectory of the game uh, against Holy Cross here. And without his performance, they don't win this game because their next closest score was 14 out of Curtis Ellis, who you could tell he was getting tired because he was exerting so much defensively and trying to create plays for everybody else. Yeah, uh, Melendez is, is just, like I said, he, he's taken his game to the next level. Um, if he continues to mature like this, you know, he, he could be a candidate for All-State. I mean, he, he's definitely, he, you know how Crosby always gets that one guard? That one guard that, that that just rises to the top during the season. And it's looking now like it's going to be him. But we got a lot of season left on us. So, Dave, any final, like, tell me, what do you think about this game really quick? What, like, just... If I'm, a coach, if I'm a coach, um, I'm I, on either side, winning or losing, I'm proud of my team. Um, you know, Holy Cross made some critical mistakes at the end of the game um, to not be able to take it into overtime. So that, that's what happened for them. But it was their first game. And um, overall, it was a, a decent first game for them. But uh, Crosby just uh, you know, had a little bit more oomph in them and had that little bit of a home court advantage. Dave, you enjoy your time in Florida. I will. And be well. Uh, you be and have well Have a Merry also. Christmas and a Happy New Year. You too. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year.
That'll wrap things up here from the Crosby Palace. Our thanks to Chris Fortier at the 1320 WATR Studios and also the coaches and ADs of both Holy Cross and Crosby. And also want to thank our sponsors, the Waterbury Neighborhood Pharmacies, Bunker Hill Pharmacy, Stowe's Pharmacy, and Della Preacher Pharmacy. Also to Georgie Roofing and Siding Inc., Logan Vance Sullivan and Corey's, and Thompson Savings Bank. Now make sure you stay tuned to 1320 WATR for our next broadcast, which will be 1227, which is December 27th, Waterbury Career and Kennedy. That will be a home game for the Kennedy Eagles. But the final here, 68 to 64, the Crosby Bulldogs defeat the Holy Cross Crusaders. Crosby's 2 and 0. Holy Cross drops to 0 and 1. For Chris Fortier and Dave Grant, I'm Chris Saunders. So long from the Crosby Palace. Have a happy, safe, and healthy Christmas Eve, Christmas, and all the other holidays out there. And we'll see you on December 27th.